Hello, the Government Affairs Committee meeting, Wednesday, September 5th, uh, 2018 at 6 p.m. Present are Eric Previn, uh, Victoria Shulam, and Barry Johnson, all present and accounted for. So that's the roll call. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, the Government Affairs August Committee meeting minutes, uh, we made a recording of, and we um, I have a copy of them here. I think we can approve them because there was no quorum, and Victoria and I did our best, which we thought was great, but all we did was review what was on the agenda and move forward, and everybody was excused, is my understanding, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so, I, I think that we can approve those minutes since they're of little consequence. I will make a, a put that thing that I have in the file so that we And we do have a quorum today. And today we do have a quorum, exactly. So, update by the committee chair. Fine. I will give a short update. Um, today, uh, we're going to be meeting on several items here in this room um, because we also have uh, an item about the um, the scooters. And I just think that um, it's great that we're focusing on things that are happening and are about to happen, have just happened, and that's a good you know, role for this committee, and I think that the other item which has to do with campaign finance was a little dense, but I'll try to explain a little bit about that, and we can move on to that shortly. Um, but I think that we're we're in a good area. In terms of follow-up from the last meetings, uh, I don't know if you had any progress on those public record things, whether well, there was one about the meters we're going to try to get from DOT. Still working. Still working. Okay, so, but hopefully those will come forward soon, and we can, we can put those in the file. And um, so that's that. Now, I don't see any members of the public, but I'd like to defer, and if they do come, we will take comments uh, when they arrive. Okay. Because can I take a copy? Yes, absolutely. And, um, and now we can go into um, the proposed um, amendment to the City Public Matching Phone Program item, which is number six on our agenda. And so I will try to put this in lay terms because it is, it is dense. But as both of you know, because you're knowledgeable about this, uh, they, they fundraise council members, city attorney, controller, and mayor. And, you know, they do it because they need to raise money to expand their message. So it's, it's understood, and we stipulate that that happens. There's also a program that came in about in 1993, which is a matching fund program. And what the idea was to make it possible for people to take a contribution and leverage it, make it bigger. So we were currently doing in the last round two to one in the primary, if you had the right number of signatures, and then four to one in the general election. And now the proposal from the Ethics Commission is to increase it to six to one. Now, the reason why they want to do that in 10 seconds or less is because they have a surplus of money in the matching fund program. Now, why do they have a surplus? Well, because they can't spend it fast enough. It's all got to be spent through this matching program. And, you know, so it raises the question, how does this work? And so I looked as part of the analysis at you know, how it worked in the last election, 2015, which some of you remember, uh, I couldn't find an election that I wasn't in, so I had to pick one or the other, and it seemed like a more interesting one, because it was when David Rue got elected, uh, 2015, and that was, he was like a non-incumbent, and so that was a good example, and if you look at the breakdown, there were some other people who got matching money, big candidates who were connected to parties, but when you studied it carefully, you realized that of the 31 candidates in that entire year, only 14 got into the matching program. And 17 got zero. So Weezar was handsomely rewarded, but he's a guy who raises a ton of money already. And as Barry and you both know, there's also the independent expenditure money that comes in for incumbents, which is enormous and doesn't, and that has nothing to do with public matching fund program. But again, it raises the question is why is Weezar and Krikorian took $44,000? He's not ashamed of it public matching money against me. I was a nobody who raised nothing. So it was. It raised the question, how is this happening? So they've decided to push the levers forward. And what I think, when we talk about some of these details, I think would really be a better um, approach would be there's a threshold. One of the requirements to get into the matching fund program are is that you have to, uh, one is you have to agree to debate. And that's a good one. I can't explain why Mr. Krikorian didn't, and I won't get into that now, but it, they've got to tighten that loophole. Because I, I could explain it if you want to know why, but it's totally unacceptable yeah. to me. And now they're going to make so it... So he, he would have had to debate had correct. it been under this. Well, it, he would have... He was, I, I would contend change. that, in fact, he was supposed to debate me anyway. Um, but there's an argument that he was using, which was like a 
round off back handspring with a high degree of difficulty, which was that if you, the, the law says that you have to agree to a debate. Right. So I signed, not that you have to do the debate. If, oh. Because the reason why was they wanted to um, make it so that somebody would not be able to, for example, let's say I wanted matching money, um, but you were rich. And you said, well, then I don't want to debate this guy. So I'm not going to debate him. Nah, 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 now he can't get matching money. Yeah. So they had to disentangle that. But it was complete. That's like bending over backwards so far. It was ridiculous. He should have debated me. And all candidates, regardless of whether or not they're taking public matching money, in my opinion, should be required to debate and also to fill out candidate questionnaires just to get on the ballot. I mean, I don't think it's about money. It's about you got to say who you are and what you're about. Most politicians like doing that. It's just that when they're protecting their incumbent seat. So anyway, I am, uh, you know, to be candid, if you look at the breakdown of how this will play out, in, in their own um, estimations, they're expecting to push much more money out the door without changing the, the height requirement to get up there. You know, so people like me and people uh, like you and others who are not loaded or have a lot of rich interests can never get to the point where you can even access one penny. So, right. did I could Rue get money through that last? Oh yeah, he, he did. Even in the primary, he oh, got yeah. it. Yeah, and he was he was a really um, he's like an energizer bunny politician. Yeah, co- co- guy. Even because, though he wasn't an incumbent, right? Because he came from he the managed. county, which was the other, and in fact, the biggest electoral web is the county because that's a hundred thousand employees yeah and remember they the people who know and vote are the the unions and so so um he did very well in that and he i mean you know in fact in my report here it shows on the very um it shows how much they were able to raise um they were able to raise uh, a significant amount of money you know um i think he raised over two hundred thousand dollars in public money or no, maybe, ironically, I think Carolyn Ramsey in the David Rue race, that was the incumbents uh, raised the most. Tom LeBron yeah. is right. Um, so the, what, what has to happen is, is we don't want all the public's money to go to the tippy top of the candidates who raise the most. We don't want to reward m- fundraising. What we want to reward is connecting to your constituents. So what I came up with was this idea of a qualifying signature stipend because one of the requirements to get on the ballot is to get 500 good signatures. Mm -hmm. That's hard. I'm just going to tell you, I've done it, and I have personal experience. You have to stand out there in the supermarket. They don't want you to do it. At Fashion Square, they don't want you to do it. There's no easy way to do it, because they have to be residents of your district. That's a high bar. So to do that um, is hard, and it's valuable. We know it's valuable. We can just ask the guy from AIDS Healthcare Foundation, Michael Weinstein, because he pays 10 bucks a signature to go get things on the ballot and all other big powerful organizations do as well. So I said if we could change without changing the charter just allow those signatures to each count as a initial qualifying in kind valuable contribution of about 10 bucks then any candidate would get a small amount of money to start depending upon what the match they agree on and this has not been agreed on yet. So, you know, I thought it was a good idea. I haven't raised I raised it with some of the insiders who thought, "Oh, that's a good idea," you know, but People at the Ethics Commission, in my opinion, and I don't want to say anything out of school, they would be fired if they recommended that because this is an incumbent environment. And the incumbents, Mm -hmm. the last thing an incumbent really wants is a jungle primary with loudmouth people who are saying stuff that's true. That's not what they need. What they prefer is to have all the money, buy the billboards, buy some ads, you know, get the word out. And the people who can't, raise enough money or not a threat, well, I won't debate them. And it's really just a disproportionate value on fundraising as opposed to connecting and having something to say. So, you know, to their credit, they want to change the matching, I mean, the debate requirement slightly, but they're actually weakening it because what they're saying is in a primary, you have to have a debate, one debate, and in a general, you have to have two debates, or it says it could be a debate or a town hall meeting. Now, a town hall meeting is like a debate, it's just that it's driven by the candidate. And I don't know that, I think that there's a lot of ways to have a town hall meeting to avoid facing your challenger. 
you know, so that all the questions come to you. Right, right. We've been to one. I mean, Krikorian puts them on. It's a thing of the incumbent, you know, because they can kind of control it. And right, right. I, I don't. I'm not against town hall meetings. Well, it's they're just usually that, not doing it against who they're running against, but it'll be on an issue. Exactly, yeah. and they'll be super prepared, and there'll be good questions. Yeah. And so, again, it does help with the message of getting stuff out to the people, but it doesn't help with the. Um, and perhaps this is. Uh, I'm too close to this with the, you know, a candidate wanting to challenge. The incumbent. I mean, that is what it's all about, ultimately. So in, I once wrote an article with my brother about that called The Unpardonable Sin of Politics, Refusing to Debate. You know, because they do it. Yeah. Garcetti does it. He said the reason why Garcetti refused to debate any of the mayor candidates was, A, they're all a bunch of kooks, and B, um, nobody has raised enough money to be a threat. So I have a question yes. about one of their recommendations, which it says the signature requirement is eliminated. And, I mean, I don't want to give too much weight to the incumbent, but on the other hand, as a voter, I don't want to have a hundred people running for mayor either because none of them they're just doing it for the hell of it and they didn't have to get any signatures right. it seems like having to do something at least makes people a little more serious about running or not but, and not anybody off the street not, I'm not and I don't mean homeless no know, no I know what you mean but you I just, just mean can decide oh I'm going to just do it for the hell of it well, clutter up the the ballot good point I, I want to just say that the um, hello welcome hi is the board meeting yes it is how are you it's good to see you again <laughs> This big is crowd. this is not the big crowd. This is the uh, well, this is the government affairs That's what I committee. For. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Good to see on you. Campaign Gover- finance. Government's my middle name. <laughs> right. Well, good. It's good to see <laughs> on a, you. No, on a, unofficial business. I'm Lane Lane Semper. I um, worked for the studios most of my career. Um, I lived in Sherman Oaks until my landlord got caught without a permit. So now I'm staying with a friend in Chatsworth, and I co-chair the Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council of Sustainability. Oh, Campaign. nice. Well, thank you for joining us. It's and good I've to made see many you. public comments with you at City Hall. Oh, there you go. That's why I recognize you. <laughs> I'm Victoria. It's Victoria Shulam. Nice to meet you. And Barry Johnson. Hi, I'm Barry. Hi, Barry. And we are the Government Affairs Committee. We're not. We're a quorum, but we're not the whole thing. There's a couple people, and we're talking tonight about uh, an item six on our agenda, oh, okay. which has to do with the the amendments to the public matching fund. Oh, my went off. And so. So that's what we were talking about, and we're going to continue, and we'll hear from you as you see hear what we're talking about, and then you can sort of. Uh, Barry was asking about the signatures, that, and I that totally was kind agree. of my one qu- right. But after just to be going clear, through the um, stuff you sent us, what they so the way the way it works is there's two signature periods. There's the period to get on the ballot where every candidate for a city uh, council district election has to get at least 500 good ones. So just for the folks at home and others who have, you probably have been around that a little bit, you have to get like 800 to get 500 right. good ones because some of them are not in district. People forget they changed their voting address. Right. So that won't change. That's a clerk charter thing. Oh, okay. The, but but okay. You're no, you noted a signature. We want to get rid of it, and that is a good so point. What, so, so what, what is they, it getting rid It's for which aspect? The funding? Yes. So okay. the way it works is, is that currently, if, you, if you're a candidate and you got all your signatures are on the ballot, um, you can and you've opted into the matching fund program, there are some other requirements. One of those requirements is a supplemental, I would call it, signature thing. And so in 2015, once all we, we all qualified, those who, there were, some of the qualifications are too hard to meet for mortals. You have to have $25,000 in contributions. They can't be from your family. There's oh, a lot right. of restrictions. So mm-hmm. if you can't do that, which most people can't, um, you're never going to get there. But if you could do that, you'd also have to agree to debate. They do that, although then they wiggle out. And you'd have to get, it used to be 200 good signatures so that's on top of the old ones, not the same. I see. And those signatures had to be accompanied by a contribution of at least five dollars. So you could do what what many of the council members did, and I kind of did a little audit. Was <laughs> they they photocopied <laughs> the five dollar bill or handed out five dollar bills? Got people in a big apartment building to sign, you know. And Interesting. So, so they all they, it was like. We got to do this. We can do this. So Mary the, Martinez. The Mary Martinez got in trouble for that. Right. The photocopy of the bill. It, di, they all had different so, serial numbers because they obviously knew what they were doing and they didn't want to well duplicate uh, a five dollar bill. You're a very smart man. Without going into the weeds, 
they were redacting the five dollar bills, which I thought was. I'm like, am I on the ethics commission? Is this possible? It's, it's public it's money. It's public. But why in the public? The only reason printed. why you would do that is so you could reuse it. Right. And if you're if you're going through all this effort to put just it's just two hundred pieces of paper. Yeah. With a fi- you you think you could go to the bank and get enough five dollar bills? Sure, but you could. Yeah. Anyway, it, the, yeah. it, it's very fishy. But they agreed, they and I lazy. agree. I agree that it's excessive. And it's ridiculous because once you get a five dollar woman who lives in the building in your district and your aide has signed her up for five bucks, two hundred of those, then you can lay line up the big dogs. And by big dogs, I mean contributors who are willing to give. So I can understand why they re- want to eliminate that signature requirement. Absolutely. Yeah. But it makes it better for everybody, including the the nobodies. But right. but the problem is, is it does nothing in the big picture because yeah. the powerful ones can do that even if it's a little annoying mm-hmm. and the reason why they are happy to get rid of it is because ethics commission staff have to check this craziness <laughs> and are like Ugh, a it's toxic they don't want to be near and time it. consuming and b it's time consuming because i noticed they put down how many <laughs> minutes it, it takes to do each one yes. it was like eight minutes to check each right, one right and but they also noted and i thought it was funny an 800 percent increase in the amount of time to check. so they're they're going to yeah. get rid of that but what they're not what they're not going to do um and what they should do and i think maybe if we do a motion the motion would be at the threshold uh, you know because the the threshold is ridiculous you know, you've got if you've got a list of here's the list of um, of people who here, if you just look at this right here, the, the top people who who, who, who raise that, money yeah. okay. are all are all the incumbents. I mean, well, the yeah. public money is going just to the incumbents. Yeah. Seventeen, and Martinez, you know? seventeen night. I mean, fourteen, seventeen. How many is it? Um, seventeen yeah. ca- ca- candidates didn't get one nickel. Well, it's absurd. Wesson and Englander didn't accept any, it looks oh, like. Oh, Englander, he's got Uncle Harvey. He doesn't need anything else. Ex- well, also, he and you're right, he raised a fortune. I don't even want to go there. I've studied his contributions. Oh, yeah. They are just um, among the worst. They have an, an enorm. I mean, when I say the worst, I just want to say that there's nothing wrong with raising money. But the problem is, is that we shouldn't, with our public bank that's trying to make the elections more fair, we shouldn't give them more money we sh- and I, they're going to get more money no matter what because matching funds it has to be open to them because it's a you know it's equitable but by could it, putting the threshold of $25,000 at the beginning of the program you're just it's a total buzzkill, if I may well, use the You expression. all know who Englander and Kanavi is. They're the lobbyists for SoCal Gas over developers oh, well. and everything. That's Mitch's uncle who raised him. That's right, Harvey Englander. Harvey was a client of mine. Really? So was Mitch. Oh, okay. I all right. So yeah. he's got, you know, the, the edge there. So yeah. yeah. I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just saying there's stiff competition. Oh, I know them. You could say anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so. You know, but I but I really do think that um, that that if there was a way for the council members to get the me- get a clear message, you know that that it's okay for you to take more of this public matching fund money because they're gonna they want to spend it. In a perfect world, let's just be clear, we would have something like like debates put on by the city where they had to participate and the city paid for it, so there wasn't. You know the the cost of having to mount that or or raise money to get people to there would be a website where people could see information about candidates where they would be required to answer you know candidate questionnaires they're called like they have oh, voluntarily but the incumbents don't even participate. I ran recently for an office and it said it's called Voters Edge and you can go up and look who's running for third district supervisor. Oh, Eric Previn, I fill out all the thing. Bobby you know, Schreiber. this other guy less cuz he's less detail oriented and then the incumbent nothing. The incumbent nothing? How is that acceptable? How are the voters supposed to have it? and the incumbent strategies there is let's not bother the voters since they're just going to roll forward with what. So that's why I like these these ways of you know, putting the candidates, whether you like them or not, in front of the voters. And the matching fund program does that, but it's not my favorite. I wish that it wasn't about giving a candidate $10,000 and saying, go for it, do your best against Weezar with, you know, 800000 But, you know, you have to, we have to accept that it's about TV, it's about Internet, it's about if you can hand out flyers, it's about hiring somebody to go 
consult. You know, so the, those that's what campaigning is. If we're going to have that, we do want to help the lower tier. But these things just aren't helping the lower tier. That's how I met you because I was volunteering on Bobby Schreiber's campaign. But then you came on board. Exactly. With us, so well, I again, I'm from not the, up. right. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean that's what people do. They start helping out, and they and it's very nice to be able to. Um, you know, be able to raise money. And another thing that I'll just disclose, because you don't think about it unless you're a candidate, is people who like you, who really like you, they, they even say nice things about you. When you, if you ask them for money in a race where you're an underdog or a nobody, they're okay with not giving because they don't want to piss off the council member who you're running against. They don't want to piss off, or you know, or the mayor, or, and it's you can't blame them in a way because it shouldn't, you know, it it shouldn't be about having to plunk your money down. Voting is supposed to be confidential, and support is supposed to be, you know, but um, so so that's another reason that I think that the twenty five thousand is really excessive, and no, you, th- there's no reason why your family shouldn't why that shouldn't count. I mean, you know, I have a sister; she's in the music business; she makes money. Why should her contribution be invalidated? I mean, these guys are, they, they hire their entire staffs and women, you know, that, which is fine. But, I mean, to suddenly make such a draconian rule. So, you know, um, we could talk about this a lot. There's a lot of things. I would love to hear if, I do, if people have ideas of ways to get the, you know, the kind of um, playing field a bit more level. Endorsements. First of all, Bobby spoke very highly of you. Yeah. Although you were co- competitors, you came on board with him along with um, she's the a other Facebook candidates. Friend. Right. I can't believe I forgot her name. She's a Facebook friend too. She's terrific. So I think endorsements are really helpful if you can get a name on there for trust. Yeah, endorsements can be helpful, but that's you run into the same problem. Is is that people, even though they like you, they might not want to endorse you if they think you don't have a great chance. Now again. That's those are problems of candidates, yeah. you know. But but that's a good suggestion. That's Pam, another. Pam, that was it. Pam, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mayor Pam. Um, so you know, my 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 short list of things that would be great are to make the debate requirement harder and more firm. I was negotiating with the LA Times woman about that earlier this week because she said, "What do you think about it?" And I had, I was honest. I said, "I don't think it's stronger because I think by introducing the idea of." Um, a town hall meeting or a debate, it weakens immediately what a debate... Because a debate means facing your challenger. A town hall meeting, believe me, there's lots of ways you could do it so that, you know, imagine me and Krikorian. Like, he could have used... One thing he did do is he agreed to go talk to the YMCA, which was an outrage to me because they are my... I'm a member. And he and Nazarian had agreed to hand out the awards, you know, like the day after the election. (laughs) Oh. Or maybe the day before the election. It was actually the day before the It was so bad. And, you know, and so that could be his town hall meeting. And then I would be completely out of luck, although I wasn't. So I just don't, I think the debate requirement needs to be tightened up and it needs to be absolutely clear that the, um, that, frankly, it should be all candidates have to agree to at least one debate in a primary and at least two in the general election. That, that to me is, uh, you know, it shouldn't be about the matching money. Um, now, as for the matching money, I do think that those 500 good signatures are a lot more valuable than $100 and $5 bills right. photocopied the in the lobby. The initial 500 The initial 500 without money. Yeah, you don't have to like right. me or not like me. You try it, by the way, any of you that's or a, anyone that's else. That's enough for me, yeah. I, I think. Give the guy a little money to yeah. start. And, then, yeah. and guess what? If you did it, if we agreed to some qualifying signature stipend, A, it would be... Um, it would be a, a, a game changer slightly because people would be given at least a seed. Some people could take that money and try to raise more money. Plus, the way they're doing it now, it's really fraudulent. It really it, is. Well, what it boils down to. So why even do it? Yeah. And and as I tried to analyze... if I yeah, going to boot up my Wi-Fi to find out Trent Lang, the proposition to get money out of politics. Yes. Would that apply? Well, that... The, I, I can tell you about those guys. and. Okay. Um, I'm sorry to and common cause. No, no, no. We're now. very glad you came, and we appreciate you know public input. And really, thank you for coming. And Trent Lang is a guy who runs Clean Money. It's an organization, and they Facebook me constantly, and everyone else. They're doing a great job of trying to get labeling on big expenditures. So when you see a commercial, you want to know that IBM paid for that, 
And so th- that's an area where he's really been fighting hard. There's another group called Common Cause, which is run by Kathy Feng, and she's a longtime operator in this space. Now, they are very hard pushing for the six to one match. Um, and the council members are basically nibbling on their fingers with excitement for the six to one match. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's going to really amp things up. If you look at that, that in my thing, it's like mm-hmm. just in the first year alone, you know, you get an extra fifty one grand possibly if you're an incumbent of public money. You can get up to sixty four in a general election for a council member, and mm-hmm. the numbers go up for the other bigger offices. So they're really excited about it. Um, you know, I, it's hard to stop a train like the matching fund program. So. I think that, like, the reason why I favor the qualified signature stipend idea is because it's a way of knocking sort of 100 and... I think I did the math. If you had 17 people <clears throat> getting 15000 at the beginning, that's only a few hundred thousand dollars, like two or three hundred, compared to all the rest of it going to the richer candidates. So... I think it would I like, really... I it's like a, that idea. It's a good idea. So One thing that I know about fundraising is that if you can't prove that you can fundraise, if you don't have money in the bank, it's very hard to raise money. If you can't say, I've already raised this, I need another this. Nobody has to know who you raised it from. But you have, you really have to be able to prove to donors that you have raised money. Yeah. To be considered serious. That's so was was there a council motion that generated the ethics committee to act on this? So that's a very good question. Um, the, the, because with this document, I had to basically shake loose. I mean, and I was just asking because can we attach? Can we do a CIS? Oh yeah, no. There's two uh, okay. existing case files. Um, one was started in January by David Rue. For the okay, six to one match, I saw those, and yeah. the other one was started by Bonin, right. which was really it was a classic Bonin. Immediately after raising four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, he said, "Let's get the money out of politics." Yeah, yeah. So, and, but I appreciated it because he's right, and they're all right. But they all are. They ha- what are they supposed to do? They're fighting for their seat. There are other people raising money. So we, you know, I would love to get the money out of politics completely. I have not been able to solve that yet. So we could do a motion uh, support, theoretically supporting the ethics committee's recommendations and then say, and additionally we right. would like the ABC and then attach right. it to those two council files. And we could, and we could use, I, you know, I wrote this language, um, I could, we could use this, which is, and the um, proposal should be amended to clarify that qualifying ballot signatures shall be considered in-kind campaign contributions valued at $10 each and are eligible contributions for all candidates who opt into the public matching fund program. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's reasonable. Which will be amended yeah. to include stronger debate and candidate. We can leave that out because that's a different matter. But we might address the debate, or maybe we should just leave it in because it's, it says what we want, which maybe is leave it in. stronger debate and candidate participation requirements. Yeah. how you get the truth out of them. What's that? Debates are how you get the truth out of that. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and how you know how kind of how smart or how much they know even. What kind of weasel? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. oh, I can tell you, Shilly Keel stories. Mm. Mm. Well, don't start with. I me. bet. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, if it pleases the the committee, I think that that would be a great CIS to send, which is to say that we. Uh, You know, some language like, you know, that distributing the public matching funds across more candidates is a worthy goal. To further this goal, uh, each – well, this is – you want to say something like we support the motion to increase the match, right? Right. I mean, I think – is there – we can – can we fully support the ethics – Commission's recommendations and then go beyond that? Is there anything in that you don't want to support? Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, I mean, if we blankly support maybe, that, maybe it makes as it amended. easier. Maybe, right. That's I see what you're saying because then you just have to say we support the recommendations with the Made following by the amendment. ethics right, commission, right, right. and then with the following additions. Right. So let me just think um, quickly off the top of my head if if there's anything in there. I mean, you know, it's very hard because I I would I would do a page one rewrite, but but I do think that they're trying to. 
The one thing that I think has to be, um, as I said at the very beginning, um, attacked is the threshold. So this is a way of attacking it without saying it. So maybe maybe that's a better way to do it like this than to let them figure out that the threshold. Uh, but we don't want it to because this is like instead of the threshold, it's. I think out it's good game. to spell that out. Yeah, to spell that out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should be. Um, Should be amended. By removing the threshold of $25,000 and replacing it with an amendment to clarify that qualifying Ballot signatures shall be considered in con- So you got that? It would be, um, yeah. So the ordinance. So that we, would be amending support, right, one we, of their recommendations, or it's it's is it something they didn't address at all, and we're just adding to it? Well, I, I'm trying to start with we can support the ethics commission's recommendations. Okay, good. good. With the following amendments. By removing the threshold of twenty five thousand and replacing it with a qualifying ballot signature program or a, that a will credit consi- of ten yeah. dollars per yeah qualifying signature. Yeah, I think toward, the qualifying ballots are, that shall be considered in-kind contributions valued at $10 each and are eligible contributions for all candidates who opt in to the public matching program. Yeah. Which will, which should also be amended to include stronger debate and candidate statement participation requirements. And the, what I'm thinking of, by the way, in addition to you know, making it so that they have to, nailing down that the debate, is I'm thinking of candidate questionnaire, because one year the LA Times did it, where they invited candidates to fill out, you know, they asked basically 10 questions, and each of the candidates participated. It's really good. Bobby participated. Um, you know, people participate, because they, they that's what candidates are supposed to do. They're not supposed to hide under their desk and hope yeah. no one notices that there's an election. So I will clean this up, and maybe we okay. can... Uh, the, another thing you could do, if you didn't want to say and between the two yeah. thoughts, you could say, and and with the following amendments, colon, and then one right. one would be the first one, and two would be the... That's a good um, idea. Yeah, I think a one and a two would be better than having an and between them. Good idea. One and two. I'll do that. Okay. I will split those two yeah. things and make it clear. Good. I think that, so do, do we have a... Um, I think the wording to include stronger debate and candidate statement requirements is weak and we're dealing with weasels. Okay, so let's try to... So, I appreciate that. Let's try I like to... I your style. We're yeah. not being recorded. Are we? no, yes, no, we no, are. No. Yes, we I'm are. I'm promoting are. us on Facebook. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, Mark Thank Morris you. from 350.org and Granada Hills North click like. So. Okay. Sorry. That's hilarious. Thank you. Okay, um, so... So how would you strengthen if it? If you give someone a, a, this much space to weasel out of a debate, they will do it. Let me show you what they're proposing. So... And you can, yeah. Hey, Lisa. Hi. How are you? I'm so sorry. That's okay. okay. I just have the worst headache. Oh, no. Hi, Hi Lisa. Lady, Lady Semper. Yeah, that's not garage. fun. Yeah. No. Sitting in traffic. All that. Stronger debate. Here's, the, here's what they say about debates. They say, um, another qualification criterion requires candidates to agree to participate in one debate with opponents in the primary and two in the uh, general election. This requirement has existed since the inception of the matching program and requires only that the candidates agree to participate. Uh, 
The Ethics Commission recommends an amendment that would require candidates to actually participate in a debate or conduct a town hall meeting. Put it in but like the, that. the okay, but the or conduct take a town hall meeting. A, right. Take that out. I think that's what we should say, but we do that's not. That's a weasel thing. Well, it, it it's it, it should be it should not be instead of. Right. 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 It shouldn't be there at all. Right. So, Lisa, uh, I don't know if I can I, – I could try to bring you up to where we are. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Um, we, we've we been talking about the whole concept of campaign finance, and we zeroed in on um, the current look at changing the campaign finance ordinance, which they're going to do probably at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And we're, to we're talking about writing a CIS right now, mm -hmm. saying we agree with the Ethics Commission's recommendations mm – -hmm. However, which are these recommendations which is a long list of things they want to change from current okay. right which is a long list of things that they're doing to try to address people's grievances over a period of time but they're not good enough obviously and so what we're saying is we agree with what you're doing however we also uh, have the following amendments uh -huh. amendment one each qualifying ballot signature mm -hmm. and for your information you get got to get 500 to get in city council. That's where people in your district mm -hmm. should count as a in-kind contribution, mm. up to $10. And then when pushed into the matching fund machine, we'll immediately create a stipend, at least a small stipend. It'll probably be, depending upon what the match they agree on, mm -hmm. could be 15000 could be 20000 for each candidate who makes it. So this would be a big change because most candidates, like, for example, an upstart like me or others right. are always trying to get over a threshold of twenty five thousand before they can even anyone under that's not a uh, incumbent yeah, has and a really up so if battle. you if you right. look at the stud this is how it played out in twenty fifteen. We were studying, you know, you can see that <clears throat> the candidates up top here they're, they're, sorry, it's a, these ones are the ones who got the money. So and got elected. And got elected. So it's all the incumbents and then some of the challenges of the incumbents who are also connected to some of the bigger operations, right. but then 17 people got zero. And this is a public bank that's supposed to be stimulating conversation. So what we're saying is you give out about $1.7 million a year in this. You know, if you give 300000 to smear around the bottom and then divide up among the big dogs the upper one point, for, that's going to be better for our society. And you'll feel better because we won't approve six to one. So this is kind of like a compromise proposal. Mm. It's saying, let's shake the trees down for the lower tier right. a little. And then there can be even more up top because they're increasing the matching fund rate of six to one. They're going from currently it's four to one in the general. They're making it six to one throughout primary general. The reason why is because the ethics commission has to do a lot of work each and every time. So mm -hmm. just let's push the money out the door and good luck with your race is how they would like to do it. And I don't disagree with that. Um, so you never got any money when you were running? No. No, not a nickel. Of the public money. I mean, right. I raised some money, but not much. You know. And, and by the way, another insulting detail is that you may not use, uh, if you get a gift from a family member, uh -huh. you can't put that into the public matching fund for some reason. Whereas you can put and I won't get started on some of the other kinds of contributions you get, but, you know, from Mr. Weintraub and from people who have business before the city, the Harvard-Westlake people, you know, those are all fine. You can put them in the machine and get well, more. Somebody money. tried on the school board, and now they're going to jail, jail, maybe. I don't know. Ref Rodriguez, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was doing something different. What he was doing was he was saying, I've got $100,000 here. You give 10 you give 10 you give 10 you give 10 Oh, so total, he gave totally them the illegal. money to right. give to him. That's yeah. illegal. That's yeah. laundering. What, 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 uh. what Krikorian did was not illegal at all. It was just smart and maddening. But it, what, what it was was he and they because it's not him alone. This is the system. They all get uh, $5 contributors of up to 200 which is easy to do in a building full of people. You sit in the lobby and you... Okay. And then you bring in the Harvard-Westlake people who have a lot of business with the city and they're happy to support. He's a great guy. So they write big checks and those all go into the <laughs> print out more money machine at right. Ethics. And so guys like you know me who have good ideas and you know go to meetings... We'll never get there because nobody wants to give against an incumbent. That's another thing we talked about. You missed that. But, you know, people have a hard time giving against an incumbent because they know this woman is not going to win. Right, and now why should I put my name on her blouse when, you know, the mayor when is going to walk the other by. guy right. wins and then he's going to be mad at me for his right. next term. Right, exactly. So, Which is what happens all yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah. And there's also, as Victoria was um, 
reminding and holding us our feet to the fire the language can be very slippery with mm. these people. So we want to make it clear that, mm-hmm. we think we want to make it clear, we'd like to know your feedback too, that, that a debate is more of the right language because that we know what a debate is. There, there, it means that there's equitable rules for both or three or five candidates, equitable. A town hall can be great for informing people, but they're used by incumbents. You know, the guy, our congressman does it. Uh, they, what it is is it's an opportunity, it's a format where... People come and talk to the incumbent, and then, oh, there's, we have a question for Eric Previn, you know, how do you like Studio City? You know, they don't know anything about these characters. And they can cherry pick and just move They cherry pick, right. And they Mm -hmm. they can do it. So it's not that they're bad, but it's not instead of a debate, in my opinion. So, um, what... Well, this uh, is fascinating. Yeah, it's an interesting area. It is an interesting area. And Mm -hmm. the, the context of all this is... The Ethics Commission met in August and agreed to all these things. And then, like all city matters, nobody knows when it's going to land on a committee. But I pushed because I said we have to know because these are confusing rules. So they produced this thing which is called the transmittal. You know, because I was saying there's no way that the council members would know what to do unless you show them what you're thinking. Right. So print it up. Don't make us listen to the three hour. And so they have one of these, and this is it. And it's all the rules. There's also a link which I sent on our agenda, so you have it at home. But um, is this part of it? No, that is that that is a printout of what you have Here. linked on the agenda. Right. There's a. In other words, there's a link to that document, which is called the transmittal, which is their proposed changes. And what we're now zeroing in on is that we agree with most of those changes, right. with the exception of a couple amendments. One of which is, we think that the debate language should be stronger and not um, permit a town hall instead of a debate. Mm -hmm. And we think that you should consider this qualifying signature stipend idea because we think that um, they're valuable, it's hard to do, and it's the public's money. These are public people who were able to get 500 good ones. There's no extra work because the clerk has to do it and does a great job of checking anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, the other program, which we're leaving behind, and there even, as Barry pointed out, smearing away the signature requirement entirely for the matching program was just making work for people in the ethics commission to check, you know which is already done why would you check 100 signatures when you've already got 500 good ones just to get and on they, the ballot it's the just candidates like candidates could be fraudulent about that money contribution they could hand them a $5 bill mm-hmm. that they would the person would give back exactly. to them after they signed it. So, you know, that's just kind of... Well, Nuri Mar- that, that, I think that they're, they're different. That's one of the scams. Yeah. But, they're, but Nuri Martinez got in trouble. And it was obviously not her, but it was someone in her campaign was doing something inappropriate. Yeah. No, it doesn't yeah. matter. I'm not saying it's okay to get it wrong. But I'm saying that this is like... These are silly ethics rules that, you know, should be taken... Um, you know, we shouldn't make an enormous bureaucracy to help people stimulate their campaigns. Mm-hmm. We should stimulate their campaigns mm-hmm. because, and if it's a disaster and everybody who <laughs> it's 500 signatures and goes around saying, I want to run for mayor and I'm a great guy and this is why, and gets the signatures, then gets $15,000 that they can use for the campaign, and they say, I don't want to use it for my campaign, I'm going to go to dinner at, you know, Masters. Yeah, then go for it. You know, I mean, what are we supposed to do? Then you can get into trouble with the ethics. But this is not that. This is not telling people how to run their campaigns. I have a spreadsheet on that, which is the giant wad of how they spend their money, which is maddening and hard to see because how does it even help the people in the city? I know no idea, but it's a lot of money. You know, and it's not the little characters like Gregorian. I'm talking about the mayor and, you know, who spend a lot of money out of campaign funds. So. It's about so, earning your vote instead of buying it. Hmm. So, question for you: When you ran, I don't mean to make it personal. No, no. Uh, did you file for some kind of financial aid help in terms of this money? No, it's a great question. At? So, the, what, the, literally, this is what you do: you you sign up to run, okay, and you get all these signature things, and you go out and get signatures. And one of the forms they give you is, "Do you want matching money?" Uh-huh. And of course, you say, of course, I do. You know, that'd be great. You don't have to. But right. you, if you sign it, it says, okay, if you sign this, you agree to debate once in the primary, twice in a general, and you agree to ma- raise $25,000 before you can get in, uh, and you agree some other things that don't matter. But the $25,000 before you can get into the program, 
kills it for yeah. 17 out of these 31. Uh-huh. And believe me, it's hard. Um, now, even if I could, because I am not without rich friends, so I could probably, you know, if I was, let's say I really just wanted to get in there. Right. It's hard. So why? To me, it sounds like they're charging you twenty five thousand dollars to just to they step are. into the race. But I don't understand that though. What if you just want to spend ten thousand dollars, do grassroots, and I mean, what is the requirement for the twenty five grand? What are you spending it on, other than like flyers, posters, getting your name no, out the, there? No, the the good question. The concept is that. You will be rewarded uh-huh. because you're a serious candidate if you can raise not a lot like we are, who can get hundreds of thousands, but just twenty five thousand dollars. Right. And just twenty five thousand dollars sounds like just a little. Yeah. But if you put it in the terms of the five dollar contributions, right. It's five thousand five dollar contributions. So that's a lot of people to get five bucks from if you're going that route. So sure. I don't want to go that route. I want to go, Mom, can I have seven hundred dollars right. route? But your mom's disqualified. <laughs> so right. you go, you're kidding me. So how, where am I going to get people? I'll call my friends from TV. They're like, against Mayor Garcetti? Uh, I don't know, Eric. I mean, I love you, but do I really right. want to like put my name up as like the guy who's tearing down the mayor? Right. So, But just so they can take you seriously? Just so they can take... It's literally, Lisa, it is as absurd. I'm so pleased to see a sober person going... This is just your life. How did that get approved? Is what you're wondering, right? Yeah. It is a good point. It's because there are organizations that, you know, are moving the balls around from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, like Common Cause. Who, you know, if you have a candidate who can raise money, these matching funds really help. You know, because it's just like sure. It's All a, of a sudden, it's a time six. Recording this, I would name names. Yeah, no, you can name names. We name names here. I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with David Rue's effort. He worked really hard, but he raised a lot of money, and he benefited from this. And the, the only thing that I find slightly annoying about David Rue, uh, not personally, but about the, the concept of David Rue, is that he's a great reformer, supposedly, and yet he's pushing for the six-to-one match. Without removing the threshold, it's going to mm-hmm. further Help widen him, the gap and like everybody him. else. Yeah. And they say the reason why they argue they need to do that and it's a fair fight, a fair argument, is because now our elections are cycling up. So there are all these, we used to have little city election, and I would go to Gelson's and they'd say, sir, I think you missed the election we just had. And I'd say, no, this is the election for my office. And they'd say, that's weird. So now the city and the county and the state are all together. Mm -hmm. So they're arguing that we need to raise more money because it's not just vote for, you know, Paul Krikorian against Eric Previn, it's Paul Krikorian against... The congressman and the assemblyman and the, and the president, and, the president. Every four years. and so yeah. you know we, I need more money to get my message out. Mm-hmm. So everybody needs more money, but the poorest of the poor, who are really, fo- I mean, that's why I say it's a great equalizer. The 500 signatures, um, when you see it the first time, you go, that's excessive, you know, just for purposes of comparison, to run for the county board of supervisors seat, which is a county office. You don't have to get 500 signatures. You know how many you have to get? Class, any guesses? 50. 20. Oh my God. 20 in district signatures, good ones. So you better go down there with 30, because you don't want to like be like, oh, I'm so sorry, because I obviously know 30 people. So that, but then you have to cough up. Um, I'll, I'll be specific, 2,000 bucks. And you, um, you have to cough up for the city too, but you get 500 signatures, and the cough up is like 450. So that's that. Um, there's one other thought that I have that uh, it's it's hard because this is an ordinance about matching funds. So I don't want to veer off course, but I just want to talk about it for one second. It would be very good if candidates had a statement in the booklets that we get at home to vote. Mm-hmm. It would be great because then you could open it up and you could see, you know, a little paragraph by the incumbent, a little paragraph by the challenger, a little paragraph by the cook. Everybody gets a little paragraph. But for some reason... Don't we get that in the larger book? Well, for like the state. The the state has agreed to do that, but they charge a little too. But what you don't know is that for a county election or a city election, it's not possible. Unless for the county election you can do it. (laughs) But it's so expensive for English and Spanish mm-hmm. to put a 
200 word statement, which I wrote. I went down the route of challenging this. So I wrote a very sharp little statement. I said, here it is. And they said, well, okay, it's $44,000, Mr. Previn. Oh, to print it. And then if they customized it by district, then they'd have to print so many different versions. But if they put them all together as one, the thing would be so thick, it you know, then you paper and well, mailing. My, my feeling is that's what the internet is for. Yeah. You know, but but still, I think we're going in that direction. But that is a unbelievable outrage that it costs so much because it implies that you have that you're a big high roller candidate. And you know, as I've uh, established, I'm not, but other candidates should have a fair chance. This is not about me personally. This is about you know, I, I, I have some exposure to how these things work and I just think that that's a great failure that, that we don't have those things available. And and um you know, this I, is in a city where we have money for bike lanes, and not well, this. Well, I know, but I'm, I'm. Even though I know none of us are clamoring, we shouldn't go off the point too much. But for about bikes, you know, we want to have people not run over. So you know, but it's a question of where. It's a question. Of yeah, where. it's all about where because I think we agree on this. Yeah. Lot. But anywho, so I think that we have a, a plan. We're going to generate a CIS. We could vote on those issues. Uh, you want me to read it one more time? So you Can have a flip. Yeah, I'll try to. Uh, I will try Unless to spit it out. You want me to read it. Well, you can definitely read that this. Good. That would be definitely helpful. But one but, other thing that yeah. bothers me is the first rule of becoming a candidate is you have to sit down with your closest friends and your family and tell them what you want to do, why you want to do it, and ask them for <coughs> a check. That's the first that rule. That is. That is. It always has been. Mm-hmm. Why is their money not good enough to be counted? It's outrageous. It is literally somebody with a deft little pencil just made it that much better. That should be eliminated. Well, because we could add you, that. And, because and the, fir- the second rule Although we're elim- the only problem with eliminating that is what we're trying to do is eliminate the threshold altogether. Because by creating a stipend, it kind of a replaces it. Instead of charging, as Lisa pointed out, $25,000 to access the program, we'll give you fifteen dollars or $20,000 at the outset of your campaign. Mm-hmm. And if you want to use it to raise more money and go into the matching program, good, good choice maybe. You might want to say, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make a commercial about myself and smear it all over YouTube. You know, because I think social media really does work in politics. And then you can blow through your twenty grand and watch your numbers remain the same. You know, or you may get traction. People go, I want to give you money. You know, or you build a website that has a good fundraising thing to it. You know, there's things you can do with fifteen or twenty thousand um, dollars. So I don't know. I think eliminating the family thing is a great I didn't point. know that and I think that's a form of discrimination. Like I don't have a family. So I can't run, you know, that's not fair. Oh, I see what you're saying. If you're taking her thing seriously. Oh, I thought you were right. serious. No, no, she was <laughs> No, I am serious. She's serious, oh, but okay, okay. but no, she what she's saying what she was saying was the first thing you do is raise family money. Oh, I mean, yeah, if you don't have a family, then you get your husband. Or your moved out of state, so I, yeah. Right. No, it's not a requirement. What she means right. is that it should count. Should. It should count. Okay. Because it's so, it's the most you natural thing. Well, right. yeah. And with your, your number one and number two on there, I would I call do. it with the following and additions why. to yes. instead of amendments. Because we're idea. not really amending no. the uh, ethics commission's That's recommendations. We're just saying. Right. With the addition of would you consider adding this? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. With the following additions, right? Is is this a vote? Are we voting on this? Yeah. I mean, I think I'm going to have to perfect the language because unfortunately it's hard. But I'm going to. It's basically included in the thing that I did. You get a yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. No, but I have a thicker one with some other things in it. Here we go. This one has, I believe, the those pages in it that they were attached so you may have and heard. here's the ethics commission report right. we're supporting this mm-hmm. with two additions that's what we're doing now it's with the following additions one and two and um the first one is removing the threshold of twenty five thousand dollars and the second one is um amending the ordinance to clarify that qualifying ballot signatures shall be considered in-kind campaign contributions valued at ten dollars each and are eligible contributions for all candidates who opt into the public matching program. Period. Okay. Mm-hmm. So everybody who gets the 500 signatures to qualify 
would then get um, ten dollar credit as a can campaign contribution. So you'd have everyone would get a credit of having gotten five thousand dollars in contributions. Then if you get six times that, you'd get thirty thousand. Right. Yeah. So by and you've gotten over that twenty five grand. Threshold. And of course, of course, those numbers could, for example. We could propose it this way because maybe they're not going to go for um, six to one match. In the, you know, it it feels to me like what they did by saying six to one in the primary and six to one in the general. What it feels like to me is they're going to say, oh, you know, let's make it three to one in the primary wow. and six to one in the general because that's yeah. when the big books are. You know, and they're going to pretend like they're giving right and because be they more, ask too much. More so that's money like, going out in the primary because right. more are running at that point. Exactly, and they don't want to lose too much of the money. Right. They want to save it for themselves. So I think that this is like a compromise we're playing yeah. on a little bit. The the one thing that I would like to uh, address though is and maybe it's three things, two amendments. The one is um, removing the threshold. And the second is uh, amending to clarify that the ballot signatures can count. And the third is <coughs> clarifying that the debate is a debate, a debate. not a town hall. Mm -hmm. That town hall meetings are encouraged, of course, but that a debate means meeting the other candidates on an equitable face to face yeah, basis. Face -to right. Do you want to include who the host would be? Because you can have slanted, mm. well, like, like legal women voters, but then they push your kill. At this line. level, you can't get that picky. I mean, yeah. you're right. Well, exactly. But uh, it, you, you raise a good point because it's been, it's so unregulated. It can be so slanted. Right. And I, I will just tell you that it is astonishing. I mean, in one second or less, because I don't want to make it about the times I've run, but, you know, you just, it is really shameful that these organizations that are supposed to be stimulating debate are are doing other things mm -hmm. i mean it's incredible it's very hard i mean you haven't seen we don't see any debates anymore when do you, when was last no. time i mean that's well, not good in 09 when krikorian was first running there was probably 20 debates in cd2 you know in the open but, seats, and there were like right. 10 or 12 running you know so there right. were a lot then. well that's the david ruth thing but right. that's because there was an open seat yeah it would have been with him yeah. too Exactly. Um, so, so I think that um, if if we agree on those points, I will draft that. And can we vote? Uh, or is there any opposition? No. Can you read it again? Sure. Um, we are voting to uh, support the ethics commission recommendations. Okay. Number one. And, and, um, and, and with the following additions. With, if, yeah, we'll CIS. Attach, right. We'll attach it to the. To, to we have two uh, council files. There are two council files. One which was put into effect in Jan both in January 2017 by Bonin, which I describe as the clean money camp. No, yeah, clean money um, ordinance he wrote, which says, just as he concluded, raising four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Let's get money out of politics, and that's right. a good. It's a good essay. And then Rue had a motion that was coinciding with his failed. Now it officially failed his developer ban. You know, he wanted to ban developers from contributing. Mm. Nobody understood how that would ever possibly work, so that oh, went away. Oh, so corrupt. Well, developers may be corrupt, <laughs> but they are entitled to give just like lawyers and doctors. Sure. And, I yeah. Mean, yeah, they give a lot more than anyone They're more, no Well, more they may, but again, it was his idea was not a good to, idea. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, they're, you're, they're good developers, they're bad developers, yeah. and, but you can't do, you can't target. It's like priests cannot give or, it's just, it was a strange <laughs> idea. I mean, I know why he wanted to do that because the, but he made a lot of money on the anti-developer side getting contributions, so. It's, it's tricky. There's but one it, developer that runs a pack out of their office. Oh, I know. No, they are incredibly powerful, and they run our town. Um, and, you know, curbing the maximums is another thing that's an area, you know. But um, I don't know how to do that, uh, frankly, because they're in the process of, like, jacking up the, the, the rates because they're also doing a CPI, um, you know, that's the Consumer Price Index, uh, tune-up. So... They do that because it means a hundred thousand dollars back then is only worth fifty seven thousand dollars today, so we need to everything up to a higher number and so now instead of going up to a hundred thousand dollars they're going to be able to go up to what is it a hundred and sixty thousand dollars so that's going to be the new ceiling 
Um, anyway, getting back to the point, we support the Ethics Commission recommendations as the opening line. Okay. With the following additions is the second line. One, we want to remove the threshold of 25000 A. You know, B, we want to amend the ordinance to clarify that qualifying ballot signatures shall be considered in-kind campaign contributions valued at $10 each and are eligible contributions for all candidates who opt into the public matching program. Okay. Period. And finally, and this would be three if we separate it out, we want to clarify that um, we that debates should be debates, not town hall meetings, um, so that there is an equitable face-to-face uh, meeting of the candidates. Okay. That they and and in there is the. Is it already in there that they must participate in that? It, they said yes. It they they have it in there. They in they there? said they're tuning. They acknowledged, and I have to admit, I'll take a little credit for this because I flew off the handle. You know that well, and they had to put in writing. When I first started talking about this, it was all just a oh nobody nobody broke any what rule, and then they finally said okay we have to tell you because you won't do this alone. It says he has to agree to debate. It doesn't say he has to participate. Mm. And so, how many? Well, good question. We could tune that up. The way they're proposing it, and it's not proposed to change, is at least one in the, in primary, the primary. And at least two in the general. We could say at least two. I mean, I, I personally, one is not enough because you want to recover from when you screw it up mm-hmm. and come back strong. So maybe we should say, maybe that's a good point. Maybe we should. At least two in yeah. both, uh, I would camp, in both voting in cycles. cycles. Yeah, why not? At mm-hmm. least two in both voting cycles. Great point. Because you can catch the contradictions and... Not only that, you can correct what the candidate says about you. For example, I'll just say that, you know, Kuehl kept telling Bobby Stryver, you put $2 million of your own money on him, and he didn't, and he couldn't have a say. But if you get a second time to, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, you know, so that that's what it will be. It will be, basically be an attachment to that big wad. with a, It's like a little cover sheet with that small paragraph. So, uh, So if there's any opposition, please feel free. But then we're unanimous, okay. four of us, and I will generate that, and we will send it to both of those case files because I have no idea. And if there's a third one for the Ethics Commission when they generate, if they plop it into um, Rules Committee, which is where it may go, and gets its own case file, we'll send it there as well. And I can't imagine the board not wanting to approve this. Well, we have to get the board yeah. to approve it. That, unfortunately, we do have to do. And I don't think it will be a problem either. We'll yeah. explain it. But, but uh, okay, well, good. Well, that is the item on the Let's move on the agenda to well done. And thank you all for uh, your input and for participating in that. Um, now, comments from members on subject matter within the committee's jurisdiction. Um, from members, that would be any of the anybody else have any ideas for the upcoming next? What's next? Um, if not, we can no pressure. I don't right now. We would like to give you a chance if you want to give a little public comment or tell us anything. Um, you kind enough to let me do. Yes. Um, I I miss climate change. So any questions you have on that? I trained with the Honorable Al Gore again last week. I'm one of his top volunteer climate oh, wow. reality leaders. Well, we will definitely so. dial you in. You know, we have a sustainability committee. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I was part of it, and then they dissolved it. Oh, it's a meeting think... again starting at tomorrow night at 7 here. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, they fortuitous. started it up I again. I was supposed to be at NASA for the Von Karman, but I think I'll have to chant. I'll, I'll come here instead. And if you go on the SCNC website, under click on sustainability, mm-hmm. um, you can get the agenda. That's great. I'm friends Greetings. with Heidi. Hi. Hey, how are you? Are you, um, did you apply through that one program that was going through for Al Gore? I started training with him in Iowa in 2015. Oh, right. Okay. So that's how I did this. Okay, and because recently, a couple months ago, uh, let me just adjourn. Let me adjourn this meeting. We'll we'll I'm talk sorry. because we yes, have another I'm meeting sorry. too. So, but welcome by the way. Hi, thank you. I'm Nima from. Oh, Lincoln. great! Nice to see you, Nima. Excellent. Thank you. Well, we're about to start that meeting, okay, but okay. for now, we're going to just close this meeting, which is a meeting ahead of you. Which and the final one is any closing comments from the chair? No, other than thank you for attending, and we look forward to uh, a successful uh, document we'll send to the board, and I'll send it to you all as well. So, uh, therefore, we adjourn. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.